Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss B. I'm sorry like I have wet hair just because I just finished to take a beautiful shower after workout so I feel extremely energized and very happy and glad to be here. Today we're going to do an activity based on colors, so this is the art element that we are taking care of and we are kind of uh, following the color wheel, right? So the right order between a uh, relation between primary, secondary and tertiary colors. So I have been studying and doing some practices with my students in school about the color wheel because I teach, as you know, different art uh, subjects such as painting and drawing and art foundations for my seventh graders. So we do more like a formal traditional training on the color wheel, mixing color, etc. But my students love the colors, also the youngest one. So I try to make it also funny and, uh, you know, a little different so we can break down the color wheel and we can include it into design, right? And just uh, focusing on the color and the interaction of the colors on a, a different type of design. So I'm going to do something that is not what I did in school because just in case some of my former students or my current students wants to take uh, uh, some practice, want to do some practice with me and with these videos, I want to offer them something different. And, um, so I'm going to do a very simple design. This is the perfect activity uh, if you want to practice some art because it makes you happy, but you feel that you're not good at it, or if you feel that your skills are still not, are still not super, super sophisticated or high, this is perfect. Really, anybody can do this activity, and I can give you suggestions along the way. If you're more advanced and you want to try different things, a different media, you can add more, or if you want to keep it as simple as I keep, or even simpler. For this activity, I will use my art journal, which is a mixed media paper. If you have your journal, you will use the same. If you have a big journal, remember that we are going to cut or fold actually the page in a half so you can frame for you a smaller space. This makes your practice less intimidating because you have to think about less space, so less quantity, and you can really focus on the quality. And you can also reduce the time of the practice. You, I will personally use Sharpies because I feel that the majority of people have and likes the Sharpie. They are really affordable and they are very easy to buy and find in many different places, in stores and online. If you have another brand or more professional alcohol markers, you can use that. If you have just a Crayola markers or any other brand of markers and you want to do this activity with your kids, with your grandkids, do it. It's just completely, totally fine. If you have crayons, it will work out the same. If you're more advanced and you really love color and pencil, you can use color in pencil and you can even kind of the, investigate a little more about the blending and the shading, right? So you can represent some of the value, dark and light. This just if you want and if you are a little more advanced, okay? So you want to explore a little deeper this color wheel. Uh, so I will use mixed media paper, a pencil for drawing, uh, fine black sharpies, regular black sharpies, and all the colors that belong to the color wheel. And once I turn the camera, we're going to display the color in order. So I'm going to kind of help also people who are not very familiar with the color wheel. This is the perfect, perfect activity. It's so like easy, it's so affordable. If you have a birthday party and you want to have an activity for the kids to do, you can just set the table with paper and the material that I just li listed and you can play my video or you can watch my video and practice first so you can guide your kids. If you're in homeschooling uh, parents, it's perfect. And it's a beautiful opportunity to review the colors, the color wheels, talk about their difference. So, uh, remember, friends, to subscribe, share my videos, like my videos. If you want to join my Facebook group, which is called, of course, Art with Miss B, where people share what they have been creating and they create with my tutorials. It is a very nice, a welcoming and happy uh, space, a virtual space. So please remember to do so. I'm going to switch the camera so we can start this colorful and very happy practice. Okay, friends, this is my journal with the pencil. I'm going to reframe the page. So I'm going to kind of make my space a little smaller. You can do this with a ruler, as I told you, if you really like a very, you know, straight and perfect line. Or if you feel that your hands is a little shaky and you need a little support and help, go for it. Now we have our space 
and uh, I'm gonna do like a just arches basically different sizes more or less actually same sizes probably different heights you will see it's like you point to the pencil and you go up and down maybe this one is gonna be a little shorter this one is gonna be a little taller and one more we're gonna have a four if you have a bigger space and nobody you know you can nobody tells you to do just four you can do five or six but i feel that four it's a kind of a good number here then we're gonna do the same on the second row and maybe we can start coming from the outside so we have a kind of a little alternation that makes the design more balanced and more interesting so we have one we have two this one would go up again three four and a little piece of the fifth then we keep going one more time i would say one very tall we can have fun very puffy and one again tall and i would say that we have one two three four five six seven eight this one we don't count nine ten eleven twelve we have the 12 colors that we need they are in the traditional color wheels with primary secondary and tertiary color okay now let's oh before i'm gonna double double the line so go on beautiful exercise for our fine model skills if you need to go slower you will go slower if you need to go faster you will go faster this is an organic design so the lines has to be definitely accurate, but they don't have to be geometrically perfect or perfect. They really need to look like a very, like handmade after all, right? Free hands drawing. And we have it set. Now we put away our pencil and we start to organize our markers. So we have them already in the order. As I told you, I have my package of, I think there was a package of 36 uh, uh, Sharpie. And so I have a variety of different tones of blue and different, so we can make it a little like uh, more interesting. But we see if we have the blue, we're gonna have like, uh, let me see. We do traditional, we do the green. Actually we do blue green because between the blue and the green, you have the tertiary blue-green. So blue, blue-green or turquoise, green. I would say lime green. After what we have the yellow, then we have a yellow-orange, right? Then we have an orange, because remember, if we mix the yellow with the orange, we're gonna have a lighter orange, correct? Then we have, um, mm -hmm. I don't have, well, yes, we have an orange. I should have a, a red orange, but I don't. So I'm gonna make it mixing probably and overlapping the orange with the red. I have my red, I have my red violet. I have my, let's place this as a violet. Although this one might make more sense. We do red violet, we do violet, we do blue violet that could be a mix between these two so i'm gonna keep them two uh you know connected blue violet and then we will go back to blue okay so you can start from the red if you want and you can go all the way like this right i'm gonna start from the blue i will go all the way here okay the color wheel can start from any color remember that the three primary are yellow blue and red you can start the color wheel from the yellow from the blue from the red and then little by little, little by little you will build up in that with the color so i'm gonna move those aside aren't they pretty by the way they are super pretty we're gonna start the coloring as i told you regardless of what is the media that you're using a very good habit mostly for my young artists, my kids, it's to frame the shape that we need to color. And then with the marker, if you're using markers, even if you're using traditional markers and not alcohol marker, an extremely nice technique is just to go this super long, slow and controlled strokes. 
it's like that you're tracing a lines against line next to each other like lines and lines i feel that it's very relaxing and it will give you a beautiful color very saturated which means that they're not like a gaps they're not like a scribbles you keep it consistent and it's such a tremendous exercise for our coordination skills and fine model skills something so simple can have a huge impact right so we're gonna move this aside we're gonna keep going with our next tertiary color which is gonna be the green blue blue green turquoise you can call it the way you want and once again this beautiful nice technique sometimes i see my student the tendency of um, coloring quickly because they want to be done i always kind of uh, uh, reinforce the concept to them that it takes the time that it takes we don't need to rush we don't need to be eager to see the end you know the end of a project is gonna it's gonna arrive right and it takes the time that it takes also i want them to have a very uh, good coloring technique and to learn correctly since the very beginning and if we scribble all over the place we think that we're doing faster but actually we are not because um we have to retouch them everything that we do because it, lo it will look like a really not very pretty we put away our beautiful this is probably one of my favorite our beautiful blue green and we go and we proceed with this green now i hope it's not gonna be too dark it probably yeah it's pretty dark if you have a little lighter green that would be even better but these are kind is a brand new package that i both probably i think that i got these at costco sometimes they do have in the department you know when they sell office stuff they have a very good deal with these 24 or 36 sharpie packages and you know sharpies are sharpies regardless where you buy them and i do a lot of projects with them also in school because as i say it's something like that the school can afford people can afford they are easy to uh, find in store and online they are easy to find you, you you know you can find very good deals also because it's such a popular and common item so that they do discounts and good deals every time and I want to show you that you can create a beautiful, rewarding art also with very affordable and approachable materials. You know, you, we don't need to spend hundreds of dollars. If you want to do it, go for it. But I'm saying, right, is the process and the good technique and the effort that we put into things. Now we have this beautiful, bright lime green, more yellow green. And you can clearly understand that if you look intensively, you can find some uh, yellow undertones in this one, right? This is why, why because we call it yellow green, because we mix the green with the yellow. Pretend that you are mixing colors, right? Maybe in acrylics or in watercolors. And we put it away. Now we go with the yellow. Now for the yellow, I'm going to color this one, but I'm also going to color this tiny one because I feel that it's too small to be representative of one color. You know what I mean? It would be too little of a yellow and it would not be balanced. So we really want to see the yellow. So what I will do, I will do this. I will consider this a little extra of the yellow and then I will give the yellow one proper big space because, you know, it's our primary color in visual art and he deserve it right he deserve to have a pretty big a strong representation because thanks to the yellow when we mix it with the blue we're gonna have green and according to the amounts of blue and the amounts of yellow we can have different type and different tones of green if we mix it with the red we're gonna have orange but also according to the amount of red and yellow we're gonna have a different tones of orange So it's a really important color for artists. Now we put this away. We're gonna switch it to our uh, light orange or yellow orange.
and we keep going with this nice technique. Now, if you don't like these long, slow strokes, you can also do tiny. But remember, do really tiny and make sure that you feel the space properly so you don't have to go back and fix any gaps. I personally like this technique because it's very relaxing. It's a slow movement instead of a short and fast. So it's going to give you a very different feeling when you use it and it gives you a wonderful result and it's kind of relaxing also to see this, you know, going up and down and little by little covering up the white and that's it. Now we're going to have a regular orange, which is this one. It's kind of a pretty, it's kind of dark. So, you know, I think that it's more like of a red orange. So what I will do, I go here, I will do this, I will finish to color the section with this orange. If you have a lighter orange, you will just do lighter but still darker than this one. You will just go with one coat of orange and that's it. This one to me looks more like an orange red, which is the following one. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to finish to fill the space. Then I'm going to go back and grab my yellow and I'm going to go over just to bright it up. Now, I don't know if you will be able to see a huge difference through the camera, but I can tell you that here, like live, I can already see more yellow undertone and it's warming it up. Okay, so... Maybe you can go a few times. And in this case, you see I'm changing the type of strokes. Uh, there you go. I feel that now is uh, more like of a lighter, like more medium orange. So I will use my same orange just because mine was so dark. And this is, will be my red orange. Now, if you have only an orange that was this more or less this tone, use it without going on with the, without going over with the yellow. And then for this one, you can use... Uh, orange and maybe add a little bit of red on top if you don't have it uh, if you don't have a very dark orange if you're using pencil you will be able to do this blending and mixing perfectly so you can really technically just work with the three primary and the three secondary colors and you can build up a mixing color now we're gonna put away this orange we're gonna go with the yellow with the or ugh, my goodness with the red i said all of them that is like when I, it happens when I have to call a student, I call it with three different names before finally, sometimes no, I'm very, very, you know, on spot. Sometimes even at home, sometimes I will call my son, my younger with my older name, my husband with my son name, the same with color. But it's okay. Thankfully, we can visualize, we can see what I'm doing. So don't worry about my words. You can, you know. Rely on the paper. That is definitely more accurate. Beautiful, nice uh, cherry red. Now we're going to put the red away. We're going to do magenta. The magenta or red violet is a mix between the violet and the red. This is why it's still on the warmer side. But it also depends on the violet that you have to mix. Mm. And I, for me, like the smell and the sound of a Sharpie on the paper is, uh, you know, one of the most beautiful and rewarding things to feel and hear. Hopefully it's the same for you. Let me see. Yes, this is a nice violet. We're going to use it. I'm going to frame once again. So this is just an example and we can do multiple. I actually, a very long time ago, I published a video uh, about the color wheels and the color theory. And I painted a big flower with watercolor. 
I think that because at the beginning of my channel I didn't have the same camera or technology, the quality of my video was not as good as it is now, and many people asked me to redo it. I think that I will do it on a smaller scale so we can uh, paint it all together and we can kind of still investigate a little more the mixing of color, right? When you do it with watercolors, for example, you're going to mix the color and really create and see what happens when we mix the primary uh, and then we mix the primary with the secondary, right? And we have our tertiary. But still, this is a very effective, uh, beautiful and simple way to do uh, a color wheel. So I would say that this should be more of an indigo. Let's see if this one is to me is too purple. I will go over with the blue because it's supposed to be a blue violet, right? So we want to make sure that there is some blue in it. It is already darker than this one and a little less warmer. So it might be okay. But if you think that your violet is still too similar to this, mix on top a little bit of light blue. And voila. Now we're going to have some fun with the black. And we are going to outline the lines that we did at the beginning. We can also go over the lines that we trace to frame our piece. Once again, if you think that you need the support of a ruler, go for it. Or just do it by hand. And if it's not geometrically perfect, it's even better. Just the secret is like stay extremely focused on your hand and the tip of the marker and go slow. As slow as you need to go. This is not a, a race or a competition. If you need to pause my video because you need a little extra time, you will do so. If you want to go faster, I don't advise you to go faster because I try to my best to keep a nice rhythm, right? So we're going to do the outline of the outside line and then we're gonna do the outline of the inside line the black will make all the colors pop will define our design better will make it a different like a more interesting And we want this line to be nice and bold. This is why I'm using a, a regular tip and not an extra fine tip. So we're gonna do the same. And when you do the outline of the inside line, go on top of the color, like don't worry about it because the black will cover. So we still have enough uh, white space. On the second one, instead, I'm filling it out. And remember that if a little accident happened with the black, very carefully, you can reshape that. And go inside and then feel it. This is so like a, I would say that is a stress-free practice, a boost of a inner energy because the exposure to colors it's really therapeutic. And now we do this one instead, just the line, stay inside, so overlapping part of the color. And we leave the space between these two black lines white for now. 
as I was saying, like, you know, color therapy is a real thing, as well as emotion of colors. These are really all the um, topics and science that many, many people investigated, like, you know. Now, I switch to an extra fine Sharpies. If you have another brand, go for it. And what I do in this one, like the white one, I will just do tiny segmented lines. Now, this will taste our patient a little bit, which is good because I try my best to include not only different motion to train our fine motor skills and coordination skill, but also some motions and some movement and repetition that can support our patient, for example, support our dealing with frustration, even if something is kind of tedious and annoying, how can we still stay committed to the practice, right? If you want to do a type of a curved line, go for it. It's going to take you probably a little longer, but it will give you the optical illusion that something gets a little more three-dimensional. This is more like if you are an advanced, a little more advanced, right? You master your lines and you can go like this, 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 this. But if you feel instead that you're not satisfied by the lines the way they are uh, coming, you can also do all black. So I'm giving you different options according to what you feel and the level of your skills. If you have been coloring with the pencil, you can also do this part with the pencil or you can switch to Sharpie or any other black permanent marker and it's going to work perfectly on pencil as well. So you will create a sort of a mix in media because you will play with two different media. We're going to do the same over here. Look how cute. Yeah, some nice movement and interest, right? Patterns are always uh, fun to do and something once again so simple can create more movement and rhythm in a piece. Movement and rhythm are, you know, principle of art and design. And we use the element, such as colors and lines in this case, to support and represent the principle of art and design. In case your lines with a pencil are still visible at the end of the practice, you can erase them. And remember also that a little mistake happened mostly in thinking about my youngest artist. So if you're doing this activity with your kids and grandkids, maybe they're still developing their coloring skill and they could go a little bit out. With the black, you do your best to fix it, but also you let them know that it is okay because this is why we practice. And the best practices are the ones that we mess up. So we can really make our mistakes and learn from it and get better and better and better. But we finish everything that we start and we save it so we can compare it. We can see the huge improvement. The more we go along with the practices and more complicated practices and concepts. And voila, now to fill this background, because the background is part of the design, right? Sometimes we might choose to leave it white, but not in this case, because I want to really the color to pop and this color will to be the main interest. So you have different options. You can fill the whole thing with a black, all black, or you can create a pattern alternate only with this fine Sharpie, only with this regular Sharpie or alternating to what I will do. I will create a pattern with both Sharpie just because I have the thick, I have the thin, and here I combine them. And so there is a visual reference and to me it makes sense to make my design cohesive. Since I have the fine Sharpie here, I'm going to start to trace some lines, but I will leave a space between them because I will fill the space with the Sharpie. So one line, space, another line, space, another line, space, going down, space, like that. You can do the line horizontally, whatever works for you. For me, like a vertical, it's as a better flow with this design that is, you know, 
going up so for me it makes more sense and as i say we can make choices about the element that we use the direction of this element the position the size and when i say element of course i refer to lines shapes colors you know and you can use them to support the harmony and the balance of your design okay so now let me see the other one if it has a better tip i'm gonna fill this space between with the same type of line just with a thicker marker and I love it because you have this kind of alternation, thin and thick, that once again, it's one more interest point in our design. It's connected with element that we use it already inside the color wheel. It makes a nice background, not too dark, not too light, that can support what we did here and they don't, it doesn't take attention out of our color wheel, deconstructed color wheel. And if you want to add a little extra, you go back and maybe you can do a segmented line, dashed line. This is also a very good exercise for kids. So probably they have to go slow because at one point they might, you know, it might be tricky to maintain the same distance and that more or less the same sizes of this tiny little segment, like dashed dashes i don't know yep sometimes you know the english still confuses me look how pretty and it's a beautiful opportunity to also try a different type of lines right so we got vertical we got segmented we have like dashed, thick and thin, curved and straight. And once again, two simple elements are able to create such a pretty, very nice to look at it and rewarding design and give us the opportunity to review many different concepts and also boost our energy because only at the look of this colorful, beautiful deconstructed color wheel, I just, I feel happy. Now, if you are, if you love the very intricate and tangle, another suggestion that I can give you with the extra fine Sharpie and you can do first with the pencil and then with the Sharpie depending on your skill or how sure you feel about it you can create pattern inside I wouldn't do maybe too busy pattern mostly on the dark color just because remember that the main focus has to be the color wheel but as I say you do you and uh, uh, remember to have fun so this is I would say is the intermediate you can do less if you're still like a beginner and you can add the more details if you feel that you're more in advanced. I'm gonna switch the camera so we can say goodbye. Okay, friends, we did it again. This is our beautiful deconstructed color wheel. It was for me a lot of relaxation and a lot of fun and I hope that it was the same for you. As I told you at the beginning, I always try to do my best to give you options and support you and guide you so everybody, regardless of their skill levels, artistic skills or artistic background can be successful and feel great about it and have fun and learn something new and maybe do something a little out of your comfort zone. And most of all, spend some time during your week to do something with your hands, something that you create and you build from scratch, right? This is so therapeutic for many, many reasons. So with art, we have always a combination of a concept, a skills, a feeling and emotion that, you know, we can learn, embrace and work on. And I see you all very soon with another colorful practice. And remember to subscribe, share, let me know in the comment if you practice with who, how did it go. 
and whatever. I love when you send me feedback or when you share like a part of your experiences with my tutorial or in general, that is the way that we connect. And I know that online is a virtual space and the computer is something of a cold media, but we can make it as welcoming and as warming as possible. And this is also thanks to you and the way that we interact and we respect and we embrace each other. So I wish you all a fantastic day and I see you very soon. Ciao!